Hello everybody, welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today in deck number 459, take two, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about Animar Soul of Elements. Now as y'all remember, back in 2011, the very first Commander set that came out, I bought uh, all the decks in non-English because they were way cheaper and... Yeah, I'm just now getting around to building Animar. Uh, what is this? Nine year, eight years later. It's been a while. Well, I will go ahead and read Animar for you, since uh, it is a one-one elemental, pro white, pro black. Which whenever you cast a creature, it gets a counter, and your creatures cost one less for each counter on it. So now there is a uh, quote unquote correct way to build Animar and and the most powerful way that I've seen is probably the uh, the morph and the alluring and just you do all the things and that's that's just a little too solved for me so uh, I I went a different route so there's a lot of creatures here I have it actually in the exact order because I was almost done with this video and my phone rang because I forgot to turn the, the sound off. And I couldn't just close out the call because my ringtone is a copyrighted song. So, <laughs> lesson learned. Anyway, we're going to start with our ramp. There's, it's heavy, heavy green. I mean, a lot of creatures. Of course, it's, it's going to be green. So we got our Mana Elf Trio, Lanawar, Finhorn, Elvish Mystic. The Quirin Elves gets, you know, a dual Mana Elf. Um, Harvester Druid, the Frontier Guide searching up some lands. Silvok Explorer, Sylvan Ranger, Rattleclaw Mystic. And I guess if we just want to morph that, we can. Uh, <laughs> and Teamer Banner is like the only... Uh, mana rock in the entire deck and to be honest with you I'm not crazy about it staying in this is what I call a slot so I'll probably be putting something in its spot now I went with plus one plus one counters because it, it it's a cool theme and it works for creatures now I tried to stick with creatures that had like just one or two pips in the cost I, sometimes that was just not doable, but the long shot squad here. Let's see if we can. It's going to pass out reach to all your creatures with one one counters on them. The Serotok is going to pass out trample to your your one one counter creatures, and I wanted some redundancy there, so we've got the Serotok. The Bramblewood Paragon. Now, granted, there's no no real warrior theme in the deck, but I'm using it for that second line, as well as the Tuscard Captain. Now, the Sapphire Drake does something similar, but it gives it flying, and that's totally worth the six mana investment. That's probably not going to be a six mana investment. I mean, uh, we've got ways to put a ton of counters on Animar, and if nothing else, you know, we can bang in there with Animar, but. Sage of Fables, there again, not heavy wizard, but I like that removing counters, drawing cards thing. Titania's Chosen works decent since there's a whole lot of green. Man, it's just kind of fallen. There's been a lot better versions of this card, like the oh, the red one, the red changeling that I wish I had for this deck because it's amazing. It would have been awesome. That may be what the team your banner is going to be. Huh. <clears throat> Renegade Crisis. Uh, man, this thing's awesome when it evolves. You know, it just puts another counter on all your creatures. Already got a counter. Counter, counter, counter. Have I mentioned counters yet? Experiment Crush. <laughs> you know, it's just a great counters card, as well as Prime Speaker Zagana. Now, the Battlefront Coup Shock, or Crew Shock, rather. Can be blocked by more than one creature, so that's that's pretty cool. Reverend Hunter's going to enter big since we have a heavy green element. Uh, Zamic Guild Mage. I mean, it gets extra counters, and it does that removing counters to draw cards thing, so that's really cool. Uh, Avatar of the Resolute. 
Mm. I mean, it's not bad. Draining the Welk is a, an expensive counterspell, but more than likely, we're playing it for blue-blue. Because by the time... Yeah, I, I mean, that's... Uh, and that's a heck of a card for blue-blue, man. It's a heck of a card for six mana. Uh, Shapers of Nature. Putting counters on, taking counters off to draw cards. And Triskillion. I love Triskillion. Probably going to cast Triskillion for free. And the ability to get those counters on. Uh, maybe Proliferate. Uh, a few of the Proliferate cards may be decent in here. But what I wanted to do was... I, I wanted to do things like... I wanted multicasting creatures. Uh, like the Shrieking Drake here. Uh, for just a blue mana, for a, would you play a card that said, blue mana buyback zero, put a 1-1 one, one counter on your commander. That's what this does. Uh, you are, I mean, you just spin the blue, cast a Shrieking Drake, put the Shrieking Drake back in your hand, you cast a creature, bam, it's on Animar, and you just keep going. That way you can mount up those counters, equal to, you know, the blue mana that you've got. Mana War is kind of a one-shot version. You, you know, it, it does put something else back into potentially your hand or their hand. Uh, Ancestral Statue, kind of similar, although free, because he is colorless and that's going to get reduced by Animar. Stampeding Wildebeest is going to put one of those. Hopefully the, we get the Ranger so we can keep getting that extra land. Maybe Wood Elf would be a, a good spot in there. Dream Stalker. Um, putting something back. Now, Cloud of Fairies, and to a, a bigger point, Peregrine Drake, these are, I mean, these are good cards. I don't have to sell you on these cards, but when you reduce them down to just a blue mana, they get amazing. Because if you can spend a blue and untap five, and then maybe Mana War this thing back to your hand, oh, baby, that's some value. Now, Drowner of Hope comes in, it's going to bring the boys to the yard, but it's. I'm looking at it as a 5-5 five, five for a single blue. So, uh, Colonian Behemoth is, I mean, Shroud 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, would you pay green green for that? Because I know I sure would. Big Daddy to Rastodon. <clears throat> uh, by the way, th there's a... As I am recording this, we are in the midst of the C-19 spoilers and Primacon. The wall was just spoiled yesterday. And my wife has just flat out told me that that video will be demonetized. She don't think I have the... Um, what's the word? Discipline not to say certain things in that video. Anyway. <laughs> Zealous Conscripts, good card, great card for a single red. Tamal Drifter. Now, Tamal Drifter gets good when it's, you know, one blue. And it's, you know, it's part of our card drawing suite. And I wanted to try to use as many creatures as I possibly could in the deck. You know, Soul of Harvest. Good card draw. Garrick's Pack Leader. Rights of Flourishing. Double meat, double cheese. Uh, bread for the hunt. 1-1 one, one counter deals combat damage to a player. You can draw a card. Now, I think this is my on my wish list that uh, I wish this didn't use the word combat, but I guess they had to because Triskelion would have been busted. Anyway, Inspiring Call is busted, I think. Uh, well, in this particular deck, anyway, it's awesome. You draw cards equal for each creature you control the one encounter on it. It could stop there, and it would be a decent card. But then those creatures gain indestructible during the turn, so that's that's pretty sweet. Acidic Slime and Octavia Orangutan are just in there for removal, as well as Hole Breach. You know I've got to run Hardened Scales, right? Uh, I mean, I had to. Um... Probably the decoction module and the fabrication module is probably not good enough to make the cut. I'll admit. Uh, maybe it's not. 
these are probably also slots uh, because the odds of getting them both in a deck with no tutoring for them is yeah I guess if it happens it happens and it'll be cool but Sunbringer's touch uh, bolster and then passes out the trample death's presence so you can pass around the counters from the creatures that died you know that's pretty neat uh, trap essence I, I'm not exactly certain how I feel about this I, I've never played this card before so kind of checking it all off the list I guess uh, hinder vines uh, awesome awesome fog variant here because uh, uh, your creatures are still going to do damage and we've got the overrun now I did want I did want something big you know what I'm saying I wanted big things because with that many counters on NMR we want to you know start throwing stuff for the free so I threw in the mirror ball and then that kept me going up the Eldrazi chain because I was like well you know what the Eldrazi uh, they're all colorless they're all creatures so there's no reason why we can't just start pitching these down for the free um, there are no none of the titans in here, but still, uh, Cabana Balagad's good. Ulamog's Crusher. Ulamog's Crusher is actually hilarious. Uh, Maro says, um, in design, they were scared that Annihilator was too powerful. Turned out it was. But the thing about it was, was people were not attacking with their Annihilator creatures in, in playtest because they didn't want to put their giant creature in harm's way and they knew if they could trigger that annihilator just one time it would be so addicted to the player that they would they would do it so they made this card specifically attacks each turn if able to force you to attack to force you to see that annihilator is a good mechanic well i guess we all learned that lesson didn't we <laughs> Uh, breaker of armies uh, this uh, kind of like the what was that taunting elf from years ago and there's been several other variants but uh, putting that ability on a 10 8 you're gonna take out you know a lot of what blocks it but the rest of your team's getting through so uh, hand of emrakul annihilator one artisan of kozilek annihilator two and you get another creature from your yard to the battlefield. And of course, we have the Desolation Twin. He's going to... And in theory, this is really, really good to put back in your hand if you cast it for the free. If you've got 10 counters on Animar, that way you can just pop this Joker back in your hand, pop it back down, get another 10-10 token. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seems mighty Christmas landy. But it also seems like it could totally happen. Don't know. We'll see. Now, let's look through the non-basics. There's nothing real special here. Uh, growth Chamber, Simic, Stream, Falls, Boilerworks, Swiftwater Clips, Is It Guildgate, Highland Lake. Now, Rugged Highlands, Cassandra Refuge. Now, I... I I want to say something here real quick about the mana bases. Uh, a lot of the multicolor mana bases that I use do have a, a lot of the common and the uncommon lands in it. And you know what? I am thankful that those cards exist. Because back when I started hardcore playing Commander, I mean, we're talking a decade now or more, there wasn't that many there was the the lands were just so few and far between uh common duels just didn't exist uh, uncommons ones were might as well have been rare because they didn't do them that often uh and we had just i don't know i am glad that we have so many now and yeah they come in most of the time they come into play tap but you know what that's fine uh, it's not like our our goal of commander is to set down and win as absolutely fast as possible. At least that's not mine. And that's not my play group. We're more of a, a casual group. But 
uh, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, and then the Any Color Lands, like Frontier Balvac. Comes into play tap, but it's Any Color. Same way with Gateway Plaza. Ancient Ziggurat. Now, where did. What am I missing here? Why is this card? Why did it climb? I have never purchased or traded for an Ancient Ziggurat because, man, I bought a ton of Conflux back in the day. And so I've just had these. But why is this card expensive now? I, I don't know. And then lastly, of course, we have a Command Tower. So that is what we have got for Animar. Finally got Animar done. Got him uh, crossed off the list, or well, highlighted, I, I guess you could say. And we are... I, I didn't put any... Any tokens in there? I need Eldrazi spawn tokens and 10 10 to Yeah, I'm slipping. But deck number 459 is done, and we're gonna. You know what? I, I'll even try to get this straight this time. Check that out. <laughs> so we will put number 459 up here, Mr. Wow, that's black blue. You can tell I, I, I bought a ton of those purple sleeves, didn't you? But anyway, I do appreciate y'all watching. Y'all let me know what you think. And uh, it's time to shuffle and cut.